Just 20 minutes from the world-renowned Sydney Opera House and the famous Harbour Bridge lies a piece of golfing heaven. Welcome to New South Wales Golf Club. Originally laid out by the legendary golf course architect Alistair Mackenzie, New South Wales Golf Club has spectacular beauty with sweeping ocean views and a unique coastal environment. With its awe-inspiring natural beauty, outstanding conditioning and requiring various course strategies based on the wind direction, it provides the type of ball striking examination that every golfer relishes. The stretch of four holes from 13 through 16 have been described by some of the world's greatest golfers as simply the best consecutive par fours in golf. New South Wales Golf Club is ranked at number 14 in the world in the top 100 courses outside the United States by Golf Digest's Top 100. Alistair McKenzie, on designing the course, stated, At Sydney, I made an entirely new course for the New South Wales Golf Club at a place called La Perouse. This presents, I think, more spectacular views than any other place I know, with the possible exception of the new Cypress Point Golf Course in California. It's our pleasure to show you around our magnificent property. The opening hole is, for some, a drivable par four when playing downwind, but for most the opening tee shot involves more strategy, and finding the fairway at about 180 metres off the tee will set up a comfortable short iron into the elevated back to front sloping green. Show this hole its due respect, and a straightforward par will see you round off to a steady start. In the many championships played at New South Wales, this par 3 has often proved one of the sternest challenges. Protected by bunkers on the left and slopes that repel the ball away from the green to the back and the right, hitting this green is a rewarding accomplishment. When playing into a strong breeze, a common strategy is to play to the front right portion of the green, thus providing the best angle and easiest option to get down in 3. Picking your driving line from the tee on this blind, tight dog leg left is only part of the challenge on this tough par four. Everything about this tee shot makes you want to aim more to the right than you should. So executing this shot successfully is an examination of strategy, skill and bravery that epitomises the thrill of playing New South Wales Golf Club. When playing the steep uphill second, it's usually only the top of the flag stick that's visible, so precise distance control and commitment to the shot is required. This is a beautiful, long, straightaway par four, and everything is right in front of you. Not enough can be said about this glorious hole, from its stunning beauty to the numerous strategies that have been employed to play it, depending on the wind direction. There's a story of a professional golfer who, in a tournament, playing into the wind, hit driver, putter, three iron and two putted for par. Downwind, there are stories of players coming within putting range of the green from the tee. One thing that is constant on this hole is the moments when you come over the top of the crest in the fairway and look down to the green with Little Bay as the backdrop and the ocean beyond. It will, quite simply, take your breath away. Located on one of the most scenic parts of the course, abutting the shoreline and connected to the water and waves, this thrilling hole is one of the great par threes of the world. And the signature hole at New South Wales Golf Club. New South Wales Golf Club occupies the northern headland of Botany Bay. Within Kamei Botany Bay National Park is the majestic Crewe Cove. Crewe Cove Beach, Cape Banks, beautifully sculptured rocky coastline formations offer a dramatic backdrop for many of the holes that overlook this impressive location. Which brings us to our next hole, the seventh. 
Protected by natural vegetation on both sides, there's a premium on driving accuracy on the uphill 7th. A large false front makes hitting your distance on the approach to the green critical, as anything short of the target can easily find its way 50 metres back down the fairway. The longest par 5 on the golf course, hole 8 is segmented by a large natural dune that crosses it midway. Carrying the dune for your second shot is necessary if you are to see the green for your approach, as the 8th green has the steepest continual slope of all the greens two-putt par is a good reward. Hole 9, with its split landing areas and sloping fairway, provides risk-reward options. Try to take on the second landing area, and you risk kicking down into the waste area, but lay back too far, and the well-protected green becomes a challenging target to hit. Missing the green to the left leaves one of the hardest chip shots on the course. The fairway is guarded by large feature waste bunkers up the left side and the long, slender green presents its own challenges. Hole 10 looks like a hole one should par every time, yet it has an uncanny knack of yielding bogeys and worse. From one of the most elevated tees on the course, the green below is inviting and seemingly simple to hit. However, the mostly cross breezes and in summer a stiff nor'easter provide a formidable defence for this short par 3. Carry the dune off the tee and you'll get the benefit of the run out that the slope provides. Make sure to avoid the badlands as you approach this green as the lies are what give this area its name. A long narrow green protected by bunkers left and right make hitting this green from any distance out quite a feat. New South Wales Golf Club was established in 1928 and the original natural design foundations of the golf course have matured over time to what we see today. Over the years, many of the world's greatest golfers, both past and present, have visited New South Wales Golf Club. The first of the consecutive par fours that together make up the best stretch in world golf. Hole 13, a dog leg left, rewards a bold but risky tee shot. The infinity back edge of the green provides one of the great views of Botany Bay. Another risk and reward par four, with a large dune that repels any mishit tee shot. With its elevated green surrounded by native bush, having a comfortable distance into this hole from the right angle can be strategically better than trying from more distance off the tee. The big hitters have been known to take the direct route to the green when downwind, but this can be a perilous decision. The wind-exposed green is one of the most challenging on the course. One of the most exacting tee shots in golf, and one that requires clarity of thought in terms of the shot to be played and, importantly, the next shot. The narrow landing area when the wind is blowing can be intimidating. It's a tough hole and one that defines the challenge at New South Wales Golf Club. Just to have a view of the green for your second shot requires that your drive carry the corner of the dune that creates the dog leg left. If you fail to reach the corner, a tough decision awaits. A risky blind shot at the green, or play it safe and back yourself to get up and down. A par on any day on hole 16 is hard earned. The dead ground in front of the green makes this hole appear shorter than it is. Highly exposed, this is one of the most difficult greens to hit and hold in the wind, especially when the turbulent effects of the north-easterly wind from the large slope to the right of the green come into play. Homeward bound with a meandering par five. The steep-faced fairway bunkers positioned on both sides of the fairway are to be avoided off the tee, as they generally require a high lofted club to extricate. With a well-bunkered green, only the longest hitters, wind assisted, would consider this a two-shot par five. Most will lay up to a comfortable distance and play it as a three-shot hole. A truly great golf course design. inspired by nature.
a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity awaits. It's time to take it all in.